Hi there grade 12s and welcome to today's video in which we are going to be looking at uh, question number four. You'll see it there on the screen, question number four um, from your September theory paper, okay, your trial exam. Like I said to you, this was not an easy paper, so this is why I'm taking this question by question, um, hopefully to help you understand exactly where you went wrong. Okay, so question number four. Uh, let's just have a look here. Question number four was worth 25 marks. So I'm going to go through this and we started with 4.1 which says every general purpose computing device needs both RAM and storage. Now let's stop there. First of all there's a difference between RAM and storage. RAM stands for random access memory and this is where um, you know, temporary instructions are stored when we open a particular application. Storage is where I am saving um, files and folders to. So storage becomes a permanent form of, um, you know, keeping things or saving things on your PC. And remember, when we say permanent, <laughs> I don't mean it's there forever. What I mean is when the PC is switched off, it stays there. Uh, whereas with the RAM, all those instructions loaded in once... Uh, the PC switched off, it gets wiped clean. So with that in mind, let's continue. Every general purpose computing device needs both RAM and memory. 4.1.1, briefly explain the function of RAM. Now I'm going to go according to um, the memo's wording. Please remember this is important because we need to now start changing our mindsets towards the way we are going to answer these questions in the final. So it says to hold data and programs being processed so it is temporary and this is where data and programs are held um, as they are being processed in other words when i double click on a file you know it goes into ram and then it opens so obviously the more ram i have the quicker applications can open 4.1.2 give one difference between ram and storage we already spoke about that besides the difference in function so you could have said ram is electronic where storage is magnetic. You could have said RAM is fast while storage is slower. And then a classic one, um, RAM is more expensive per gig where storage is cheaper. So think about this. If you had to go and buy 32 gigs of RAM for your computer, that's going to cost you <laughs> quite a bit of money. But if you have to go and buy a 32 gig flash drive, that's not going to be much. If you have to go and buy a 32 gig hard drive, I mean like sure, 32 gigs, we don't even get stuff like that. But a 32 gig hard drive, it's going to be much cheaper um, than you would have paid for RAM. All right, 4.2, give two input devices that are found in a smartphone, but not in a typical desktop. So they're not just asking for two input devices. Listen to the question, read it properly. They are looking for two that are found in a smartphone but not in a desktop computer so they gave us options like an accelerometer now what is the accelerometer that's when you turn your phone to the side and the image actually rotates right a barometer microphone touchscreen gps wi-fi and uh, 3g okay so those are you could have named any two of those if you have something else that is an input device um, and you know it will actually be correct but it's not listed here please use it okay next one 4.3 give two reasons why portable computers are increasingly being designed not to include optical drives so let's just stop there portable computers what are we talking about laptops okay um, when we talk about optical drives what are we referring to we're referring to a drive that uses some sort of a um, laser or some sort of an eye to be able to read what's on that storage device. So typical example, CD drive, a DVD drive. Those are all optical. Why? Because you've got a disc and then you've got this laser that is looking onto the underside of the disc to read what's there. Okay. So they're basically asking you, why do most laptops today not have DVD writers or CD writers or even CD ROMs or DVD ROMs? And we could say, well, number one, what about space, right? Number two, the technology is becoming a bit outdated because let me ask you this. When last did you play a CD at home or even a CD in the car? 
What do you use most of the time? You use your USB flash drives. So because a lot of that technology is starting to be outdated um, and it's easier to use the flash drives, you know, your flash drives don't get scratched like your CDs. I mean, some of you have forgotten your flash drives in your pockets, left it to go into the washing machine. It's come back out and it still works, okay, for the, for the lucky few. But um, those are just some of the differences, things that you could have put down there. Let me see what they say. They've been replaced by other um, devices like flash drives and hard drives. Um, software and entertainment are now available to download from the internet as well. And it saves physical space. So it's, it's exactly what we spoke about. 4.4. You are working with a, uh, a wired mouse that suddenly freezes or it fails to respond. So remember when we talk about it freezing, we're not talking about just... I have no idea what you're talking about. No, we're talking about it failing to respond. Assume that the mouse itself is cleaned and not damaged. Give two troubleshooting techniques that you could try to get the mouse working again. So they mentioned here um, you could, now remember this is a wired mouse, so that means that you've plugged it in via a USB port. So you could, you know, unplug it, plug it back in, see what it does. Um, you, can, you can even restart the PC and see if that works. You could take it out and plug it into a different port. Right? If you have another mouse, you can use another mouse, plug it in, see if that one works, to see if it's the port or the actual mouse. So they mentioned disconnect and reconnect. Try plugging it into a different USB port. <laughs> Reboot the computer. No man, I don't need this memo. <laughs> uh, 4.5, discuss two ways in which a user could ensure that data is not deleted or altered by mistake. Okay, let's look at this. If you don't want your data deleted by mistake, you know, or removed or things like that. They mentioned to us here, make regular backups. So what's a backup? A backup is where you are making a copy of the data you have, preferably somewhere else. I mean, having a backup of your laptop on your laptop doesn't work because if the laptop gets stolen, what then? Then it's gone, okay, with the backup. So you want to back up to a portable hard drive, external hard drive, external flash drive, you know, anything like that. You want to restrict access to those files. Put a password on it. Put a password on the folder. Um, have only maybe read uh, permissions on the file. So someone can open the file, but they can't delete it. They can't edit it. They can only, you know, read it. Um, I've mentioned passwords. And obviously you want to save regularly. I know <laughs> all of you save very regularly. Hmm. Okay. 4.6. Explain why business invoices, statements, etc., are generally converted to PDF, that's um, Adobe Acrobat Reader, PDF files before they are sent to customers. Now, one of the reasons is because of space, right? Your PDF file is a lot smaller, it's easier to open, and it cannot be edited, okay? You don't want to be sending an invoice to someone and then they can edit it and send it back and say, no, but uh, that's not the right amount, this is what it's supposed to be, no. It's supposed to be just a small, simple to open file that's not editable. And those are some of the reasons why you can use the PDF. 4.7, where am I now? Yeah, 4.7. Give two limitations of data projectors for showing computer output compared to normal monitors. Now, you can just think, I'll just use gaming, for example. You might have a gaming monitor and you decide, man, over the weekend, you are actually going to want to use um, a projector. Now, when you project an image, you need a very high quality projector. Otherwise, the picture is not going to be as crisp and clear as the monitor. It's not going to be as bright. You need a dark area in order to get, you know, good image quality out of the projector. Those are just a few other options. So let's see how correct or incorrect I am. Okay, image quality, not as good. <laughs> uh, normally limited to a certain aspect ratio. Now. That might or might not be the case, depending on whether you are using a newish or oldish um, projector. And um, the image you're going to get with the projector is not as clear as that of a monitor. So, yeah, there you go. 4.8. Name two pieces of equipment one would need for VR. Now, what is VR? VR is virtual reality. Many of you have seen this. You know, people have these headsets on and they are, I don't want to use the word transported, but sort of transported through these goggles um, or this, this this headset to maybe another maybe it's, it's something that's going to take you to explore the solar system 
and everything you see around you, you know, all the way around you from what you, you know, experience in visually is, is all um, this virtual reality. Okay, so there are a couple of things you need when it comes to that. And they wanted us to mention two pieces of equipment. So obviously you're going to need the headset itself. Generally, you'll need a cell phone. Um, you might even want to have headphones on or earphones so that you can really immerse yourself in this. They mentioned things like a gaming controller. Sometimes, depending on what you are actually experiencing, some people have these virtual reality, uh, these gloves as well, that allow you to do things in the virtual reality um, setup. So those are just some of the things. And obviously, there are those that go even further where they have an entire room set up for this. 4.9, state one example of how VR can be used except for gaming. Uh, they always want to cut out gaming. <laughs> gaming is a big part of it. You can use VR to explore places. So let's say, I mean, if we just take COVID, for example, COVID has stopped us from going to certain places. Okay. Now, can you imagine if your local museum set up a virtual reality setup where you could go to a particular venue, pop on these um, on the uh, VR headset and then actually have a virtual walkthrough of your or of your local museum okay so that's one of the ways it can be used maybe somebody wants to explore a school that they're going to attend they could then you know maybe log into a website that will give them a VR uh, experience of actually you know walking through the corridors of the school so those are just a few examples um, what do they mention here uh, if, uh, flight simulation communication training of pilots, marketing, education, all these types of things. 4.10, 4.10. The IT learners are considering constructing a drone as part of an awareness drive for new technology. A 3D printer will be used to print the parts of the drone. Now let's stop there. What is a drone? I should have, and I'm going to have up here, a picture of what a drone looks like. But essentially, um, it is a little aircraft <laughs> i can put it that way but it looks like a little model that's usually got these um sort of helicopter rotating blades and it allows this device um, or this unit to actually fly and some of them have cameras on um, where they can actually you know take like aerial photographs um, aerial video images or uh, video footage and things like that they've become very useful from you know using them in the army for not so great purposes um, to using them for people, you know, who want to have those like aerial video shots and things like that. So um, there's even uh, drone competitions where people race these drones uh, among each other. So they mentioned that. Then they say they're going to use a 3D printer. So what does a 3D printer do? It doesn't print on paper, people. This is not a normal printer. It will use different technology to actually be able to print 3D objects. So what they're saying is that Whatever material they're going to be using, um, they are actually going to use that material and the printer is going to make the parts that they need for the drone from that material. A 3D printer is a fantastic piece of equipment. Okay, so we've answered 4.10.1. What is a drone? I'm just going to go to the memo. They say a drone is a flying robot. Flying robot. Okay. Flying robot that can be remotely controlled or fly autonomously through software control flight pans. Now, I know some of them have, you know, just normal remotes. Others can be controlled via your smartphone. So you can actually have your smartphone um, Bluetooth to that uh, drone. Uh, some of the smartphones actually slot into the controller itself so that as you're looking at your smartphone, you can see the footage, you know, live um, and decide where you actually want this drone to be flying. Beautiful stuff. Then state two possible benefits of using a 3D printer for printing the parts of a drone. Now, please bear this in mind, right? No other complicated machinery because you're literally only using the 3D printer. You can easily design new parts for your drone. You can easily repair and replace parts of your drone. No waiting period when you need parts to be replaced and it's more cost effective for small numbers. So if you're just looking at one or two drones, then it really is much cheaper um, than going the route of, you know, going to buy parts elsewhere and things like that. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. We're on 4.11. 4.11. 4 
4.11, a computer game has the following hardware requirements. An Intel i3, so what, the, what are they saying? It, Intel indicates the manufacturer of the CPU. The i3 indicates the model of the CPU. This is an iCore 3. Okay, so it needs that type of processor to play this game. It needs 8 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs of memory, and it needs a DVD drive. Okay, so there we go. Give the general function, this is 4.11.1. Give the general function in any computer of the item specified as Intel i3. Now we know that is the CPU. And what is the CPU? It performs all the calculations, um, processing, comparisons, all those things that are done within the PC. That's your definition. Okay, so you can say CPU and define it, or you can just give the definition, but I'd rather just give both and play it safe. 4.11.2 Assuming that the DVD drive will only be used to install the game, briefly explain how one could install the game on a computer that does not have a DVD drive. Well, we could simply copy that onto a flash. Um, we could have an external DVD writer or external DVD drive, you know, where the disc can be put in and we can read it from there. There are a number of ways. Um, yeah, they tell us. We, well, okay. The memo is saying exactly what I just said. <laughs> okay. Next one, 4.11.3. Give one other common hardware requirement besides those listed above. Now, when it comes to hardware requirements, generally they will look at the CPU, they will look at the RAM, they will look sometimes at the, at the DVD drive, but what they also want to look at is the amount of storage space on your computer. So they'll tell you they need 8 gigs of RAM, but they need maybe 2 gigs of hard drive space as well and what do they say here hard drive space as well for those playing graphically intensive games what do you think they're going to ask for your graphics card what type of graphics card do you have can it support you know 4k streaming <laughs> and all these type of things no it can't yes it can but that'll depend on what the game itself requires so um, disk space and graphics requirements are going to be two of the things additionally that they could ask for and then the last one, state three advantages of SSDs. Now, let's start with this question. What is an SSD? What does SSD stand for? It stands for solid state drive, right? A solid state drive. This means that it's a hard drive that number one is smaller than your traditional one. It is lighter. There are no moving parts. That's why it's a solid state. So everything inside does not move which means it's quieter, which means it's faster, which also means when something is more efficient, it uses less electricity, you know, all those type of things. What do you think happens to the price? The price goes up, okay? So it is more expensive, but it is smaller, lighter, faster, less noise, less electricity. The sort of two disadvantages, like I said, it does cost more and the sizes, um, you, you don't really get them in, in very large sizes at the moment. So you might get them like in a 256 um, gig drive, you might get it in a 512 gig drive, but as you start going up, you, you might get like a one terabyte drive, but it's going to be pretty expensive uh, to actually purchase. So those are the things you just want to bear in mind. I'm just going to look at what they have. Um, it is, as we mentioned, faster than the normal hard drive, no moving parts, more energy efficient, more durable because your normal hard drive spins inside, so if the laptop falls off the desk, um, it's not going to damage the hard drive. And grade 12s, that's it for question number four um, in our September theory paper. I'll see you in question number five.